that's right down there. Okay, I think we're gonna get started. I think we're missing one or two more dogs. So as soon as they come in, we'll kind of add them into the fold. So let's do a little introduction here. Um, my name is Jason, for those who do not know. I think all you guys probably know who I am. If not, hey, I'm your trainer tonight. Um, we're gonna do a little more introduction. This is my friend, Christina. Hi, Christina. And this is my friend, Diana. So they come and they help me out with my classes. So if I am busy working with somebody or um, I'm after class and talking to somebody and you guys need some additional help, they are here to help you. All right, so a couple of ground rules we're gonna lay down before we get started. Do you want to sit down? No, I just stand from the Okay, you know what? I'm gonna help you with that real quick. Can you help her with a collar? This lady's gonna help you with the collar while I talk, okay? Okay. They're all the same. You may have to add some links. So, sorry. Um, Diana, go up front and ask um, uh, the young lady for a couple more links. Okay, you'll probably need, you'll need at least three. Okay. All right, sorry about that. So, a couple of ground rules. I have a no sniffing pup. I have a no sniffing policy, okay? This goes for your dogs also. <laughs> a lot of people call me up and they say, Jason, I wanna take a class so I can socialize my dog. Right now your dogs are socializing. Your dogs don't need to sniff each other. They don't need to say hi to each other in order to socialize. Um, it's, kind of, it's a big farce that dogs need to play in order to socialize. Just being around other dogs, just learning how to function around other dogs is socialization. Um, the main reason I do it for two different reasons. One, your dogs and you are here to learn. You are here to learn more than your dogs. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. The other reason is you don't know if the dog that's here next to you that your dog happens to be sniffing may be here because it's reactive or it's not good with other dogs. So if your dog walks up to this dog and says, hey, I wanna say hi to you, and this dog is completely fine to, with it, but your dog may not be or vice versa, then we have a little bit of problem, okay? So each week when you guys come, when you guys come in and out, try to give a little space, try not, in, no sniffing. Um, this facility is not mine, so when you guys come in also, make sure that you are aware of the client's dogs and you kind of stay clear of them also, okay? Um, there is plenty of room outside. If your dog needs to urinate or defecate, please, by all means, before or after class or during class. If you think, hey, my dog's gotta go, please, by all means, stand up, take them out, don't feel bad. I may talk about you while you're gone, but it's okay, I'll fill you in later. Um, but please take them out. Uh, if your dog does defecate, please clean up after your dog, of course. Um, let's see, any other ground rules? Um, if you need a restroom, right through this door here, and you go back a little ways, and then to, I think, the left, there's a restroom right back there, okay? Um, let's talk about equipment. Here, who here did not receive an email from me? Did, any, did anybody not receive an email? You didn't get an email from me? My mom signed that, so you might have sent it to her. Oh, gotcha, okay, so I sent your mom an email address. Or email, okay. So, I, I won't pick on you for not bringing the right equipment, um, but you can go pick on your mom, okay? Okay. So, in my email, there's a couple things that stood out in, in my email. Um, one of the biggest things was reward. Okay, so a lot of people say, Jason, what kind of dog trainer are you? What kind of, what am I going to learn? So, in dog training, we basically have two different thought processes. We have negative reinforcement and we have positive reinforcement. So basically negative reinforcement is using force or pain or discomfort in order to try to teach a dog behavior. Positive reinforcement is basically using positive methods, whether it be food, whether it be toys, whether it be, you know, sometimes a praise, which I'm, we'll talk about in a minute, um, but it's positive. So my training is based on positive reinforcement. I want you guys to create a better relationship with your dog, not a better relationship, but a stronger relationship with your dog. So a lot of people say, well, wait a minute. Why can't I just demand my dog to do something? Why can't I just command him and say, Frank, sit, Frank, down, Frank, come. Well, ask yourself this. The moment you don't have the dog on a leash and you say, Frank, come, and every time you tell Frank to come, you're mad at the dog or you command the dog, what do you think the chance of Frank coming to you when he's not on a leash? Zero, you're absolutely correct, okay? So positive reinforcement, the dog says, oh man, I can't wait for dad or mom to give me a command. I can't wait for them to ask me to do something because the moment they, they ask me to do something, I'm gonna get a reward. 
So a lot of people are confused by, confused by this. They say, well, well, I always have to use food. Well, I always have to rely on food. The answer to this is no. However, in the first six months to a year, if you want a consistent dog and you want a well-trained dog, then the answer to that is yes, you will want to use reward on a consistent basis. But then after the dog learns the behaviors, you can start varying the reward. Okay, so no, you will not always have to use food. However, you will have to intermittently re reward your dog. It's much like this. Let me ask you this. Raise your hand if you currently have a job or if you've ever had a job in your life. Okay, pretty much everybody. I know it's kind of a stupid question, but I've had young kids in my class who are like, no, I haven't had a job yet. Okay, so if your boss came to you tomorrow and says, I can't pay you for a month, would you quit your job and go find another one? If your boss came to you and said, I can't pay you for a month, would you? Okay, now let's kind of change our philosophy on this. If you were getting paid $100 an hour and you got paid $100 an hour for a year, and then your boss came to you and said, I can't pay you for a month. Would you quit? Now remember, you're getting paid $100 an hour for at least a year. Would you quit your job? I sure would it. If I was getting paid $100 an hour for a year and the boss came to me and said, I can't pay you for a month, I'm like, hey, no problem because I know after a month, I'm gonna get paid another $100 an hour for another year, right? Okay, so this is the philosophy behind using reward-based training where we start and we are, we're always paying the dog, we're always rewarding the dog, always paying. And then as the dog gets more consistent, as the dog is doing better, we start varying the reward. We start intermittently rewarding. So in the beginning stages, every time you ask your dog to do something, you need to reward the dog. But then after the dog is consistent, offering the correct behaviors, then you can reward every two or three times. And then maybe every four or five times. But then you mix it up. So the dog doesn't really know when the paycheck's coming but they know, man, I really want to do that because I know there is a paycheck coming. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so I love questions, okay? So I love questions, The questions tell me a couple different things. One, questions tell me that you're engaged in what I'm saying, okay? That's key one, so don't feel bad about asking questions. The next thing is, I've been doing this for, I think, about 25 years, not necessarily as a business, but I've been training dogs for that long. So sometimes I forget what it's like to be in your shoes to be thinking, oh my gosh, this guy's explaining brain surgery to me. How am I supposed to know, okay? So don't feel bad about saying afterwards, hey, you know what, man, I don't really understand that. Or during class, if there's something we're going over, raise your hand and say, hey, you know what, hey, could you explain that to me a little bit better? Because I really want you guys to have success. This is not my living. I have two other jobs that I, that I do as living. I do this because two reasons. One, I love animals, and two, I love people. Okay, so if you guys don't have success, I go home and I get really upset at myself. Like, oh, what can I do better, okay? Plus, I want you to go tell your neighbor about me too, okay? All right, so right behind this young lady here at the lab, there is a board, and on the board is what we're gonna go over each week. So my goal is each week to go over two to three new behaviors with you, okay? A behavior is anything that we teach your dog, whether it's just a look at your eyes, whether it's a sit or down, we're planning to go over two to three new behaviors each week. So here's a key point. Your dog is not gonna be trained in four weeks. I guarantee it. If you think by the end of this class in four weeks your dog is gonna be trained, I will refund your money tonight, okay? Dog training happens over a long period of time. Sometimes it takes weeks, months, sometimes even years to accomplish certain behaviors. So people call me up all the time. My dog is four years old and my dog constantly has been stealing garbage. I said, okay, how long has it been doing this? Well, for about four years, okay? So in no way are we gonna be able to change the dog's muscle memory and change its muscle memory in one day or two days or weeks not to steal garbage, not be consistent at that. So some things take longer than others. However, sometimes you're gonna get more re quicker results with certain things and that's good, but don't necessarily think that your dog is going to learn it. Sometimes your dog has to do something 500 times correct in order for the dog to really learn the behavior. That means it's lodged in their head. Does that make sense? So don't expect your dog to be trained after four weeks. Now, here's the, here's the other part of this. 
I want you guys to have the training in four weeks, okay? So my job is to train you. In fact, if your dog doesn't do a whole lot when they're here at training, it's not a huge deal to me. And I know that seems like really weird. Like, wait a minute, I came to you because I want these results, okay? But you gotta imagine, this is a very stressful environment for your dog. You may not know it, but this is like taking your child to Disneyland. Here, raise your hand if you had children. Or ever, okay, ever had children. This is kind of like taking your child to Disneyland and asking your child to do a math test in the middle of Disneyland. I imagine, imagine a 10 year old, okay? Imagine taking your 10 year old and say, okay, here, do this 100 page problem and ignore everything around you. Well, of course, it's not gonna happen. So you guys are taking your dogs out of a hecta or, and out of a neutral environment, which is like your backyard, your house, and all this, and you're putting them in an environment where it's brand new, in a building that's brand new, there's smells, there's other dogs, and there's a lot going through their head right now, and you guys may not realize it. So when I say it's, it's not a huge deal that your dog doesn't really do well here, that's what I mean, okay? However, I want you guys to learn the muscle memory in order to do your training on an everyday basis. So that comes up to the next thing. How often should we work with our dog? This varies between the age of dog and the maturity of the dog and your skill level as a handler. So if you're having difficulty masking or getting it, teaching a behavior to your dog, it's gonna probably take your dog a little bit longer to understand what exactly you want because your skill level is there. However, if your skill level is really good and, you're, and you know how to teach it correctly and you're doing really good with your dog, if you work with your dog at least eh, two to three times a day for no more than five minutes, no more than five minutes at a time, you're gonna get way more results than if you take and say, okay, I'm gonna train my dog an hour a day. An hour a day is way too long in my opinion to work with any animal, no matter the age, okay? So what varies in this is how long we can work with our dog is one, the maturity, but two, also the level of engagement, which is one of the first things we're gonna work on tonight. So engagement is basically the dog's eagerness to learn, openness to learn, want to learn, okay? So this lab here, this lab here has a lot of energy. Now, the dog is driving dad nuts. I can tell by dad, because he's like, oh, he's holding the leash really tight, and then the dog's like, oh, I wanna play, okay? So his dog is gonna be easier to train in some ways than probably, probably the shepherd over here, which is kind of like, dad, get me out of here. This place is stressing me out, I'm nervous, I don't know what I'm doing here, get me out of here, okay? So it doesn't mean he, they need to get more frustrated or they think, oh, my dog's dumb. I don't think any dog's stupid, or not stupid, any dog smarter or dumber than any other dogs. Yes, certain dogs are higher engagement and can learn things quicker because they're more engaged, but I don't think that the one dog's smarter than the other dog. With that said, okay, hold on one second. Will you answer that and save some of his please? Thank you. Um, with that said, it's basically based on your skill level and your consistency, which the, the dictates how quick the dog learns it, okay? All right, so we're gonna talk about food here for a minute. If you got my email, on the email, what was, the, one of the couple of things I pointed out with food-wise, what to bring. Hot dogs, cheese, you're exact. So, so I think somebody, um, I think you messaged, so this, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pick on her for a minute just because she messaged me and it kinda, it kinda ties into this. So this young lady says, I don't know, should I bring those things because my dog doesn't get human food. First of all, I don't feel that hot dogs are human food, okay? There's nothing, there's nothing in a hot dog that a human should eat, okay? With that said, the type of food we use makes a huge difference, okay? So let's kind of talk about back to the whole job and our boss and, you know, not paying us. So if you went to work one day and your boss says, hey, I can't pay you, I can pay you, but I can only pay you uh, $2.50 an hour, okay? and I'm going to increase your work level. Would you quit your job? Probably, right? Okay, what if your boss came to you and said, hey, I'm gonna pay you an extra $10 an hour and I'm gonna ask you to work a little bit harder, but I'm gonna give you some extra days off. Now what happens to your brain? Okay, so now your brain says, hey, I don't mind doing this. So even though at home, your dogs are thinking, hey man, the food bowl, it's coming, I'm excited. They probably bark at you if you're like my dogs. My dogs go completely crazy. In fact, one of my dogs sits there and shakes. The moment you touch the food bowl, he starts shaking, okay? He's so food driven. But when your dog is in this kind of environment, we have to change 
our variable. Okay, the variable is the type of food we use. So at home, the kibble is probably going to be golden to your dog. But when we're in this kind of environment, now we have to kind of even things out a little bit. Okay, so we want a little higher value of food. That's one thing about food. The second thing about food is it can actually dictate how quick the dog learns. Okay, here's how it works. So science tells us that we have anywhere between 2 and 2.3 seconds. Can I say it again? 2.2 and 2.3 seconds in order to reward for a behavior for the dog to coincide what they did in order to get that behavior, to earn that treat, okay? So if I ask my dog to sit and I feed him five seconds to 10 seconds later, he's not gonna necessarily coincide what he did in order to get that treat, okay? So dog training is based on repetitiveness. If I wanna teach my dog to sit, I wanna do at least five, six, seven sits in a one or two minute time frame. However, if I ask my dog to sit, and my dog sits there and chews a hard, crunchy bone, and then picks up all the, all the little treats on the ground, now what happens to my learning curve? Now I can't repeat the process, right? However, if I use something like cheese or hot dogs, two things help me. One, it's a high value the dog's like, hey, I don't usually get this. And two, it takes my dog two chews to get it through, and the dog says, hey, I wanna do that again. So now my, my learning curve is increased because I can do more repetitions in a short amount of time. Does that make sense? So we wanna do as many repetitions as we can in a very short amount of time. And the type of food we use can dictate that. So if after tonight or when you go home and you work with your dog, if you're using a certain food and you see your dog do probably more than three or four chews, maybe five or six chews depending on the size of the dog, you probably need to say, okay, I need to find something different. I recommend hot dogs and cheese for a couple different reasons. One, because they're cheap. And two, usually somebody has cheese or hot dogs. You guys don't have to go out and buy them. Plus, if you really want to train your dog, not train your dog, if you really want to have success with your dog, you'll work with your dog on a regular basis, which means you're probably going to be going through a lot of food. So every day I work with my dog probably um, at least five minutes to maybe seven minutes a day. And I usually use either three pieces of cheese or three pieces of hot dogs in the morning and then sometimes in the evening. So that's like six pieces of cheese and hot dogs. I go through a lot. If I was to go buy store-bought food, oh my gosh, I'd be spending $20, $30 a month just on treats alone. So that's the other reason. Hot dogs and cheese are usually a little cheaper, okay? Plus, I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit of a marketing, marketing guru. I love marketing. So have you guys ever gone down the um, treat aisle in the pet stores? There's like two aisles just full of all different kinds of treats. Now, have you ever walked your dog down the aisle and does your dog look at a package and say, oh man, that's something I'd really like because there's bacon on it. No, bacon is what? Designed for you, right? So you look at it and say, wow, my dog would really like that. But it does not mean it's gonna be really good for training. So. If you guys do want to be, use store-bought food, that's perfectly fine, but make sure that you buy something that's malleable, okay, and something that's soft, where the dog can just bite it and say, I want to do it again. Plus, your dog has to enjoy it. If your dog does not enjoy the food that you're using, yeah, most likely you, you're not going to get the same results. But if your dog is really driven for the food, you're going to get way more results. Okay, does that make sense so far? Okay, so if your dog is on a special diet from the vet, Please follow your vet's instructions. Don't follow mine. I'm not a vet. I cannot give you veterinary advice. Okay? I can only give you training advice. So kind of keep that in mind too. All right. So we are going to cover four things tonight. I'm going to jam a lot in your head. Uh, before I move on, I will tell you that I record all of my sessions. So um, after, usually I get them posted by at least Wednesday or Thursday. So if for some reason I overwhelm you tonight, you can always go to my Facebook page and rewatch your lesson and kind of pick up what you missed or revisit it or kind of rewind and, and be able to get more success in that way, okay? So we are gonna cover engagement, we're gonna cover release, and then we're gonna work on sitting down. So we've kind of talked about engagement a little bit already. So engagement is basically teaching the dog to enjoy training, trying to get more out of our dog to give us more than everything else. Here's a good example. I'm gonna use my friend Diana here. Yeah, can you see from it? So I do role playing for a couple different reasons. One, uh, I train differently than I teach. 
Okay, I'll tell you again, I train differently than I do. If I was to bring my dog in, I would not want you to do what I do with my dog, okay? So I have to teach you guys a little different. So role playing kind of helps me give you guys an example of what to do with your dogs, okay? So I'm gonna be Diane's dog. Diane's my handler, and let's say, let's say I'm in Jason's class, and I'm checking out this Rottweiler over here. I'm sniffing this Rottweiler, and checking him out, looking at him out, and Diane asked me to do something. Hmm. Hey, what are you doing? How you doing? Oh, I hear you, Mom. Okay, now where is my brain engaged? Is my brain engaged with her, or is my brain engaged with the Roddy? Okay, but I heard her. I guarantee your dog hears you. People always say, my dog doesn't listen to me. I guarantee your dog hears you. Your dog can hear you whisper from a mile away. Okay, no, okay, no. That's a little extreme, but you guys understand the point. Okay, so what Diane's gonna do is before she even asks me to do something, what we're looking for is we're looking for the dog. Hey, mom, what are you doing? Come on, I wanna do something. Come on, mom, can we do something? Come on, okay. At this point, now I'm ready to learn. But until we can get that, we don't really wanna ask the dog to do anything. However, you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute. I get that at the house all the time. You're right. In your home, it's a neutral environment. In your home, is an environment that the dog is comfortable with, that's used to, and the home is really where you're gonna do a lot of your initial training. However, as you get more success, as you learn more, you can venture from your home to your yard, to your a parking lot, maybe then to a park. Um, I'm not a big do dog park advocate. I don't think dog parks are good for dogs for a couple different reasons. We can talk about that later, okay? So I would not recommend going to a dog park and training there. All right, so what Diane's gonna do is she's gonna take out a good handful of food and I'm kinda just kinda Rising around, she's gonna come up to it. She's gonna, hey, what you got? Okay, and she's just gonna start feeding me one piece at a time. One, feed, 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 feed. All right. Okay, and then she's gonna say free, which we'll talk about in a minute. Okay, and then she's gonna reload. Okay, and she's gonna walk backwards again. So the key is we're moving backwards. Okay, emotion creates energy, or motion creates energy. If she just stands here and feeds me, I'm gonna get kind of bored of this, right? But if she makes a little bit of a game out of this, if she walks back and I follow her, oh man, I'm gonna get excited, okay? Now I'm engaged to her. Now I'm like, oh, forget all the dogs around me. I don't wanna leave your side because I'm gonna miss an opportunity in food. Okay, does that make sense so far? You did good, Dan, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna all do engagement in a minute, but now we're gonna talk about the second thing we're gonna learn tonight, which is a release command. Okay, anybody heard of the release command in dog training? Okay, somebody give me an idea of what, what the release command is. Do what? Not quite, okay. Something else I'm looking for. Okay, so in dog training, everything has a beginning and an end. I'm gonna say that again, because it's a really, really key point. Everything has a beginning and an end. Um, does anybody have a children under 12 here? How do your kids? One's four, okay, eh, a little young for this. But um, if you guys ever have young kids and you put your child in timeout, okay, normally I have kids in my classes, the only class I've had kids in, and you put your child in timeout, does your child get to choose when timeout is over or do, you, or do they basically wait for you to let them know? Most likely they let you know. I love it when I have kids in my class because I always ask them this question. If you got to choose how long timeout would be, how long, or how long you had to be in timeout, they look at me like, are you an idiot? You know, I had one kid actually say, well, I would put myself in timeout for five minutes. I'm like, that's a good kid. But most of the time they're like, that's a stupid question, right? But your dog is kind of the same way. So if this young man took his dog to a park, or let's say took his dog to a pond, because I'm sure his dog likes to swim, and he wanted him to come to him, dog's probably gonna look at him and say, dad, I'd like to keep swimming. Why would I ever want to come to you? So the dog made the choice when, when swimming is over, and which if it's a lab, it's going to be never, okay? So anytime we ask the dog to do something, it's a beginning of behavior. But there has to be an end to the behavior. Have you ever put your dog in a down and your dog just hops back up? Okay? It's not that your dog doesn't know how to stay. It's that your dog doesn't understand when the end of the behavior is over. The dog is choosing to know when the behavior is, or this choosing to end the behavior on their own accord. Does that make sense? So what word do we use? Verbiage is really not important. I had a client that used um, colors to teach their dog. 
Red meant sit, green meant down, blue meant, um, I don't know, whatever. But you understand what I'm saying. So colors represented each behavior. Um, I teach my dog in German. I do it for a couple different reasons. One, it impresses young ladies. And two, when I go to schools and I do demonstrations at schools, the kids think I speak German. I don't speak German. But they don't know better because they're all under 12. Okay, So um, it doesn't matter the verbiage you use. What does matter is the consistency. i say that again. Consistency is the, one of the most important parts of dog training because it's basically like teaching a child mathematics. If your child goes to school today and learns 6 plus 6 equals 12, the next day it goes and it equals 18, the next day it goes and it equals 22, well, will the child ever learn what 6 plus 6 means? Okay, same thing with your dog. Consistency, consistency, consistency. So, if you have anybody that's at home that's not here tonight with your dog, two things need to happen. You need to go home and teach them exactly what to do, or you need to tell them never to give the dog a command. It's that black and white, and it's that unfair to the dog. Ask these ladies over here if they'd ever let me give their dog a command. <laughs> they will never let me give their dog a command, and vice versa, okay? When people come to my house, I do two things. One, I tell people, hey, don't tell my dog what to do, please, or I put the dog up. If they can't not tell the dog what to do, I put the dog up. The reason being is they don't know what kind of training I'm doing. They don't know what I'm doing with my dog. They don't know the right verbiage. So they come over and they tell my dog down. My dog looks at him and says, what the hell are you talking about? And then they say down again, and my dog's like, okay, now I'm really confused. What are you telling me? Okay, It's not fair for me as an owner to allow that to happen. Does that make sense so far? Okay, so usually with the release, we're going to go back to release. Again, usually with the release, we say free. Some people use okay. I don't like okay as, as verbiage because we use okay too much in our daily, verb, uh, daily language anyways. Um, you'll be on the phone and your dog will be in a down and you'll say, okay, honey, yes, I do want beer for pizza or beer and pizza tonight. And what does your dog do? Gets up and runs away, okay? Is it the dog's fault or is it your fault? Technically, you did say okay, right? All right. So we're going to start with a little engagement, okay? Then we're going to look on a little free, and then we're going to work on sitting down. So those are my goals. Um, I am going to ask. So often I need somebody to be a guinea pig for me and just kind of start off and kind of show people what to do. So does anybody want to be a little bit of a guinea pig for me? Can I use you? I want to use you. Okay, what kind of food did you bring? Okay, um, can you hold his dog for a minute, Diana? She can hold the dog. Okay, why don't you go get him? While you go get him, I'm gonna use, um, who, do you volunteer for me? All right, I'm gonna use this young lady while he goes gets the streets. All right, what's your dog's name again? I'll call her Peanut because you're right. You, I messed up her name already once. Okay, I want you to give her all the leash. Hold on to the end of the leash. Just, yep, okay. Oh, all right, so, all right. The dog's kind of offering something a little bit to mom, but I'm gonna help mom a little bit. I'm gonna distract her. Good job. Do you have a handful of food? Okay. So back up a little bit and the moment she looks at you, feed, oh, feed, good. Okay, don't ask for sit. I just want you to walk back right now and feed. Feed, good. I want you to talk to her a little bit, good. Okay, turn this way. Turn this way a little bit. Good. Now, where is her brain engaged? Is her brain engaged in mom or is her brain engaged in me now? Peanut. Peanut. Good. 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 Okay, so after a couple seconds of this, after we work on a little engagement, she's going to say free. Now, right now, you're going to say free to your dog. And your dog's going to look at you and say, are you speaking Spanish? What the hell are you saying? Okay? So free is, seems to be the one of the most difficult people uh, things people have difficulty with because we're not really teaching the dog emotion, okay? So when you say free to your dog, I just want you to jump back free and clap your hands a little bit, pet your dog. Um, normally I don't encourage people to pet for training. The reason being is it's kind of like if you, if people say, well, I don't want to use food or I don't want to use treats. I just want to pet my dog. Well, how often do you pet your dog during the day? You probably pet your dog all the time. So it really doesn't mark any behavior. So. When you free your dog, you can, then you can pet the dog, you can be, be goofy, okay? But you're just basically marking that the behavior is over. Does that make sense? Okay, you did really good. Let's sit back down. Okay, I'm gonna have this young man do it, and then I'm gonna have you guys do it as a group. All right, come on, young man. 
I love it when lads are in my class, they always make me look good because they're very food driven. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, so I did put that in my email. I don't know if maybe you guys didn't understand it. So when you guys come in, there's a fence right along. There's a uh, kind of a rough area. Please park over there. Do you want anybody to move the vehicles now? Okay. Does anybody need to move the vehicle? No, we're good now. Okay. We're closed now. Okay. Totally understand. We'll take care of it. Thank you. All right. Come on out, young man. Got some food with you? Got a good handful? All right. So how large are they? Yeah, let's break them up in little pieces. And, yeah, smaller than that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So engagement's not something that he's going to have to do a whole lot of. We can tell you right now that this dog is saying, hey, I love to eat, okay? So come out here a little ways, away from everybody else. I want you to give her all the leash. Hold on to the end of the leash, but give her all the leash. There you go. I'm going to strap her for you. Kitty, 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 kitty. Okay, I want you to walk backwards a little bit right now and talk, say your name once. Magic. And feed her. Feed. Magic. Yes, good. Feed her another one. Magic. Oh, okay. Don't say her name again. Feed her another one. Good job. Okay, so I'm going to pick on him for a minute because I like him. His dog is taking at least five chews to get through one piece of food. So if you use those again, I would I would probably go a little bit smaller or find something next time that's a little bit malleable, okay? So can we agree his dog is not very distracted right now? His dog is really focused on him. So he's not gonna have to work on the engagement a little bit. However, he can implement free. So you weren't here when we kind of talked about free a little bit. So let's say you have five or six pieces of food in your hand. You're walking back, you're feeding, you're feeding, you're feeding. You're on one piece of food you left in your hand. I want you to throw your hands up a little bit, clap a little bit, pet her and feed her that one piece of food and say free at the same time, okay? You're basically just marking that the behavior is ending. All right, so let's have you guys all stand up. You might have to spread out just a little. We're actually pretty good. Pull out a little handful of food. I want you to do a little engaging with at least two handfuls of food and then go ahead and sit back down. Okay, and also implement free a little bit. So after you, if you have five or six pieces of food on your last piece of food, tell your dog free and feed it the last one. Christina, are you leaving? Okay, I need you in a minute. I, yes, and with your dog. Okay. Good. <laughs> Train is going to be easy for him too, or her. Good. How's it going? A little worried? Good. Yeah, a little bit. He doesn't know where he's more like interested about what's going on, I think. So next time you guys come, come a little bit early. If you can, I'll walk him around a little bit, let him get a little comfortable, okay. and that'll help a little bit. Okay. Stay afterwards, and we'll talk a little bit. Good job. It's going to be another one easy to train. She a little distracted. I pat her to sit to get treats. Gotcha. So if she's when I go to give her the treat, she's sitting. So if she's yeah. You got it. So yeah. we'll talk about that in a minute, but you need we need to do some untraining for that. Good, yes. Good job. Okay, same thing. It's taking him like a bunch of treats. Has he he's probably never had them before, huh? That's probably why he's like, what the heck are these? Yeah. Does the collar make a difference? Oh huge difference. Okay. So before you, you know, this is way, way better. better. And I forgot to tell everybody about it. Um, before you leave, make sure that you pay the money for it. You can, you can. That's fine, but we'll talk about that. Okay. okay, when you're ready, go ahead and sit back down. I see some very happy puppies. It's awesome. Okay. All right, so we talked about engagement with your dogs. I see a lot of engaged dogs. We talked about free. Okay, now we're gonna work on down with your dog. 
So down seems to be um, easy to teach, but a little bit difficult. Let me raise your hand if you started to work on down with your dog already. Try to teach your dog down, okay? Raise your hand if you try to teach your dog to down without sitting, without their butt going first. One person, all right. Okay, without sitting and then down. Okay, so I imagine you've taken some training before somewhere else. Okay, so down and sit are two different muscle memories. It's much like this couple here. Let's say his wife asked him, honey, can you, uh, can you go mow the lawn? Instead, he paints the house. Would she be confused? <laughs> She'd probably be thankful, but would she be confused? Okay, same concept. So sit and down are two different muscle memories. But the reason why people do sit and then down, because it kind of it kind of makes sense. If half the body's down already, then the rest of the body goes down already easier, right? However, what you're doing to your dog is you're really kind of confusing him. Because later when you say down, the dog is going to sit and look at you. Now, maybe sometimes the dog will go all the way, but most of the time the dog will say, wait a minute. Down means I put my butt down. Why would I want to go all the way down? Because this means down too. So I am going to show you how to get your dog to down correctly. I'm going to use my friend Christina here and her dog. Come out, Christina. Okay, if you went through the 60s, you'll recognize this game we're going to play with the dog. So what she's going to do is she's going to free your dog so the dog's down to sit. Okay. And she's going to get on one knee. She's going to put food in her hand. Now, it's a little unfair because this dog knows it down already. It wasn't supposed to down yet. Okay? <laughs> Maybe this won't work. Good. Okay, so see what she just did? So your dog, let's say your dog's on your left-hand side. You're going to take your hand, your right hand with food, and you're going to lead the dog all the way underneath your leg. Okay? Watch, she's going to do that again. Okay, she frees her dog, and then she feeds the dog. So, here's a key point to this. Most of you guys are not going to get this quick result. Obviously, this dog knows this already. So, this gets really confusing. I'm going to try to explain it the best I can. We don't pair a command to the behavior unless the dog firmly understands the behavior. Okay, I'm going to say it again. We don't, firm, we don't pair a command to a behavior until the dog knows the behavior. So, let's say Christina was doing this and her dog kept its butt up in the air. It didn't quite drop its butt all the way up in the air. And she kept saying down. What is she inadvertently telling the dog? Yeah, the down means, oh, I keep my butt up in the air. So what you want to do is you want to make sure your dog does it at least 10, 15, maybe even 20 times in a row, just like her dog did before you put a command to it. Okay. Also, do you want your dog to down slow or do you want your dog to down quick? So if Christina's dog did really slow, and then she fed the dog and said down for that, what would she be inadvertently telling the dog? It's okay to go slow. It's okay to go slow. You're absolutely correct, okay? So, um, is your dog done down? Have you worked on this already? Okay. Um, most of you guys are young, so let's say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, let's say you have difficulty getting on your knee with your dog. Um, I apologize, it's not my normal training room. I don't have my stuff. I just realized I forgot something. But a lot of... Do what? Um, hey, you want to help? Thank you. I'm going to use you too. Yep, both of you guys. Yeah, I'm going to use him. Please. So I'm going to show you an alternative way to do this. I don't know if it's attached to a mop. Is there anything on the end? Ah, we'll we still use it. Oh, okay. oh, never mind. Okay, so if, imagine this is a broom handle, not a pooper scooper. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna use our imagination. So, my friend Rebecca's gonna hold uh, one end. Okay, Diane's gonna hold one end. And what Christine's gonna do is she's gonna step over the mop here. Okay, she's gonna take food and she's gonna go underneath the mop. And she's going to pull it, and the moment the dog's body drops, she's going to feed. Okay? So you guys can use anything for this, like a chair, anything like this. This dog here is kind of strong, and Dad may have some difficulty getting down to his level. Okay? So sometimes we kind of have to think outside the box a little bit. All right? So the other thing Christine's going to do is going to show you. Let's do that again, please. 
uh, the down with the knee. Good. Okay, so, so you don't have to get up right away, and you can do this a couple times. Christina's gonna take a piece of food and she's gonna toss it just a couple feet this way. Say, she's gonna say free to the dog while she tosses it. I'm watching, yep. Good, now she can put food in the other hand and she can go back underneath, or go that way, or she can do it again. So the idea is we wanna do as many as we can in a very short amount of time. Okay, so instead of standing up every time and trying to reset up, you can easily take a piece of food, say free, and toss it away from your dog. Okay, does that make sense, guys? All right, well, let's see you guys try it. If you're unable to get down on the ground, then don't worry about it, just watch everybody else. And then when you get home, you can try uh, with a broomstick. Okay, okay keep, oh, good job. Keep your hand all the way to the ground next time, really low, there you go. Yes, no, you do not sit down. Until, until he offers at least 15, 20 times correctly, then sit down. Nope, your hand's too low still. If your hand was lower, or I'm not, sorry, rephrase that again. Your hand was too high, yes. So keep your hand really low, all the way on the ground this time. Okay, keep it on the ground. Now you know why he's not doing it? He didn't get fed the first two times. He's, oh, did you? Okay, he's a little confused. Okay, keep your hand a little bit lower. Okay, drop one right there. Just drop one. <laughs> okay, bring it closer. There, okay, slowly, there you go, almost tap it. Okay, good. Okay, wait, and feed, yes, good. Okay, now toss a piece a little ways away, say free. Good, okay, and then try it again, good job. Okay. So have like five or six pieces of food in your hand at once, that way you don't have to keep reloading. Okay, toss one, say free. free. Okay, so when you toss it, don't toss it this way. Toss it kind of out that way a little bit. Free, free, go get it. Free, Good job. So if you're gonna wanna reteach this, don't say the word down, okay? Because right now, if you've done sit and then down, every time you say down, or sit down he's gonna think butt down, okay? So don't even say down and, and he'll get it. Or she'll get it. And feed, yes, good. Good, big that. Good job, and free. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay, just got the idea. Be right back. How's it going? Are we supposed to give the command every time? No, so don't give a command right now. When your dog can do it 10, 15, 20 times in a row correctly, then we put a command to it. We don't pair a command to it until the dog is offering the correct behavior. But we're saying free, right? Yes, you can say free because free, I mean, you're basically just tossing food and your dog is getting up for food. You don't have to teach your dog to go out and get food. Has he done it yet? Good job, all right. Good job. Have a little difficulty? He did it twice and now he won't do it at all. Okay, keep trying. Nice, good job. Good job. Down. Can't stop. Down. Nicely done. So the only thing I'd say, her butt still dropped first before, before her front end. Oh. So good. she's doing it, but if you really want to define it, you should feed when the front end drops. Okay. Okay? Yep. Like when the elbows go down first. Yeah, okay. I'm a little distracted, Dad. Nicely done. Good job. All right. You guys are doing really good. Here, make a little trail. So drop one. Tap it a little bit. No, it's okay. <laughs> this is somebody new. She's like, I don't know who this person is, Dad. Don't let go of the leash.
Christians. Oh, that was a good try. Okay, a couple more times. Let's sit back down. We're going to move on. Good job. So this is really hard for her. She keeps putting one to put her butt down, doesn't she? She'll get it. She'll get it. Good job. You guys didn't know you're going to be doing aerobics tonight, right? I always thought about starting a dog training slash aerobics class. Good job. All right, let's go and sit back down. You guys are ready? Okay, so let's go over this a, a little bit more. There was a couple, couple things we had some questions on. So first of all, you want to make sure your dog is offering the correct behavior before you pair a command to it. Okay. I know it's kind of difficult because our brains and what we see on TV and we always, somebody pushes the dog and says sit and then they, and then the dog's supposed to understand, well, this is what sit means. It doesn't necessarily work like that. In fact, I kind of saw one or two people kind of push on their dogs. We never want to push our dogs into a behavior. There's two different reasons. One, it's opposite reflex. Anytime you push your dog, the dog actually wants to push back. Okay. Two, if you push your dog and say sit. Dog doesn't actually like being pushed. In fact, dogs don't like to be pushed in, into behaviors or they don't even like, it's physically uncomfortable for them. If you push on your dog's rear, it actually puts unnecessary pressure on their knees and actually can cause pain. So every time you do that, you say sit, the dog's gonna be like, oh, I don't want that. And then when you say sit later, the dog's gonna be looking at you like, oh, why would I ever wanna sit down, okay? So try to not physically manipulate dog. I know it's hard because we want the dog to do it so bad, okay? But patience is gonna add so much more to your training than trying to rush it. Remember I told you, some dog training takes weeks, months, and sometimes even years, okay? So when your dog is offering the correct down, the speed you want and the correctness you want, then start putting a command to it. This young lady here, her dog got the idea, she's done down with her dog, but what I noticed is when she did the dog, when d down with the dog, the dog actually dropped the rear just seconds before the front feet, or the, the front elbows. I like the dog's elbows to go down first before the butt because it creates a better muscle memory. Oh, this is what down means. Down means my front end goes down, sit means my butt end goes down. Basically the dog divides her body in half and it's really a strong muscle memory and they understand the difference very clearly. Does that make sense? Okay, any questions on the down? Okay, so it's really important. When you guys go home tonight, if your spouse or mom, dad, girlfriend, whoever's at home, they walk up and they tell the dog to down, tell them not to do that, okay? Because you're reteaching the dog down. For those who've done sit and then down, this is a total different muscle memory to your dog. This is actually confusing to your dog. This, uh, this young lady here, she's trying to reteach it. But when she say down, even though her hand was on the ground with food, the dog still put its butt down, okay? Because the dog thinks, oh, down means I put my rear down first and then my front end. So this is gonna be kind of confusing. If you keep having difficulty with this, if you just, if your dog keeps wanting to put their butt down before their front end down, put a different command to it. You can actually teach a brand new behavior. You don't have to stick to the down command. You can tell your dog lay, you can tell your dog platz if you want to teach a German, whatever you want to teach it. Sometimes with an older dog that's been doing this for wrong for so long, reteaching a new muscle memory is actually quicker than trying to reteach an old muscle memory. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Um, what time is it? What time do you have? Six to Okay. So I'm going to do a quick overlue of sit and then I'll let you guys go. So. Who here has taught their dog to sit? I think about everybody, right? Okay, so sit is not something we have to really push into a lot. We understand the mechanics of the spine, the spine and the, and the vertebrae in the neck. If the head goes up, what's the butt naturally do? Butt naturally goes down, right? And if we do that enough times and we tell the dog sit, the dog learns hey, really quickly how to sit. So I usually sit is not something I have to work on a lot. However, there are two things that I like to point out and sit that I like to work on with people. Um, can I use uh, you, Rebecca, please? So Rebecca's gonna be my handler. I'm gonna be her chihuahua, okay? The reason why I'm gonna be a chihuahua is because we're gonna talk about some dynamics here. So if I'm Rebecca's chihuahua and I'm right here, and remember, I am 
I am 13 inches at the shoulder, 12 inches at the shoulder, right? I'm gonna be looking at her knees if I'm this close. Naturally, a small dog will back up, okay? The dog will sit back here, or the dog will rock back here. The reason being is the dog wants to naturally look at the face and the hands. So if Rebecca asked me to sit, okay, I'm gonna rock back here and I'm gonna sit here. So now how far away am I? I'm a good almost foot away from her, foot and a half away from her, right? So I like to teach people to get their dogs to sit close to them instead of farther away from them. However, these are your dogs. If you are happy with where your dogs are sitting and you're perfectly fine with how they're sitting, I am perfectly fine with that. My job is to show you the best. Your job is to take what you take from me and glean it into your training program and then the end result is up to you. So what Rebecca's gonna do is she's gonna take a little food, okay, a little handful of food in both hands, okay? I didn't. I meant to kind of do this keynote a little bit ago on engagement. When you guys are doing engagement, don't always feed out of one side. Don't always feed out of one hand. What happens if you always feed out of one hand, the dog's always gonna target one side of your body. That's usually where the food is. So feed them out of both so the dog doesn't know where the food's coming from. It could be coming from anywhere. In fact, I put food in my mouth and I spit it at my dog. I know that's very disgusting, but it really helps with eye contact, okay? So Rebecca's gonna take a little handful of food, okay? And she's gonna do a little engaging with me because I'm kinda interested in this dog. Oh, wait, what you got? Okay, she's gonna walk back a little bit when she feeds me. Okay, what she's gonna do is she's gonna take her hands really close to her body She's gonna slide them slowly up her body until the butt drops. The moment the butt drops, she's gonna feed. Remember, it's a chihuahua. That's a really big chihuahua, okay? <laughs> so you wanna make sure that you actually hold the food very close to your body, okay? Because the closer the body, if, if my nose is right into her hands, where's my butt gonna sit down? Right next to her, right? If she takes her hands towards me and goes over my head, now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna rock back, right? Okay. However, if you guys are happy with you, the way your dog's sitting now, that's perfectly fine. Okay, the other thing, we wanna work on speed. A lot of dogs sit really slowly. There's two reasons why a dog sits slowly. One, because we overdo sit. We're always telling a dog to sit. Dog does like 10, 15, 20 sits a day, and they really get tired of sitting all the time, okay? Um, plus, a lot of times, the dog has been taught, taught to sit incorrectly. In other words, if Rebecca puts food over the top of my head, and I back up, naturally what she's teaching me is to kind of back up into the sit. She's not teaching me to tuck my butt up underneath, okay? Thank you. I'm gonna use my friend Christina here. We're gonna give a little demo here. Okay, she's gonna start with a little engagement. Okay, and now watch what she does when she does a sit. Her hands come very, very close to her body, and she slides up. So if you notice, Christina didn't like where her dog sat to begin with, so she readjusts. You see how close her hands are? Plus, the dog's butt tucked up underneath. She didn't, he did not rock back into the sit. Now she's going to do it wrong. Try to do it wrong. You know it's going to be hard for your brain. Go over his head. So now she's going to go over the head with the food and watch what happens. <laughs> the dog's really confused. The dog doesn't even know how to do it. So Christina's, Christina's brain and the dog's brain does not know how to do it incorrectly. But the idea still remains the same. You don't want to go over the dog's head. You want to try to get the dog to come up to your body. In fact, if you notice, Christine puts her, pushes her butt back a little bit. It creates a little bit of room in order for the dog to get a little bit close, okay? All right, let's see you guys all try that at least two or three times and sit back down. So start with a little bit of engagement, okay? Bring the food close to your body, slide it up your body. Try not to take, try to keep your hand right at the nose as much as you can, okay? So get rid of your bait back, like put your bait back on your bum. That'll help, okay? Bring your hands really close to your body, like down lower, down lower. Walk back just a little bit, just a little bit. Encourage, encourage. Now slowly stop and slide. Not too bad already. Now, I'm gonna get by with that tonight, but if you feed the dog that when the dog's back here, the dog's always gonna offer that behavior, right? So you should feed the dog so she's close. Too, so she's too bad, far back now, you think? It, it's you up to you. you it's up to you. If you want her closer, that's how you get her closer. Okay. If you're happy with how she's sitting, I'm happy with that. Well, she has a, um, she has a tendency to want to put her feet on my feet. Gotcha, okay. So when you stand. So that's why I'm kind angry. of Further back. Angle your toes out a little bit. Like, there oh. you go. That'll help a little bit. Oh, you, okay. Okay, try that. Good. All right. Good job. Okay. Good job. All right. Okay. You're very welcome. Getting bored with the food. You get bored with the food. Okay. 
Good job, all right. Okay, wait, freeze for a minute. Okay, try that again. Okay, slowly come to the side, bring it to your body, slowly bring it up. Okay, wait, bring it down a little bit. Tap your hand right there. Oh, there you go. See, he gets a little closer, right? So if you feed him away, sorry, if you feed him away from you, she's always gonna, or he's always gonna sit away from you. Okay, if he, he doesn't get fed unless he gets close to you. Okay, good job. How's it going? Better? Okay, good. How's it going? Okay. Tell you what, give him a break, okay? He's been here for an hour. I think his brain's a little bit fried. Okay, let's go and sit back down. We guys are ready so we can finish up here. So do you guys remember what I told you when we started this? That your lessons need to be no more than probably five minutes of time, right? We have been here for an hour. This is like the equivalent of, see this young man here? Tyler, would you like to go to school tomorrow for 12 hours? <laughs> okay, this is kind of like taking your child to school for 12 hours and asking them to pay attention. So, I'm not really stressed that your dog doesn't do really good towards the end of class. In fact, I want you, remember, I would tell you, I want you guys to remember the muscle memory more than your dogs, okay? So, tonight we covered engagement, okay? Basically, getting your dog to create a better relationship with you in order to get the dog, yes, it's focused, but more of asking your dog to say, okay, hey, I wanna focus on you more than things around us. We worked on the release command. Basically, everything has a beginning and an end. So the free basically represents, is that that? okay? If the free basically represents the end of the behavior. Okay, then we worked on down, teach the dog to correct down. We don't put our butt first, we put our front end first, and then we worked on sitting a little bit closer. Okay, any questions? All right then, so work with your dog this week. I can tell you this, if you wanna get more out of your training next week, work on engagement more than anything else this week and that'll help you, okay? When your dog comes in next week and it's jumping all over you, it's barking at you, it's like, all right, I'm ready to learn, I'm ready to train. Next week's lesson's gonna be a whole lot easier, okay? If you need my assistance after class, stay in your seat, I'll come around to help you. If you um, have purchased a collar, if, uh, one of these young ladies helped you with the collar. The lady right there in the window in the blue, just talk to her about purchasing it and she can help you. Um, I didn't really go over the concept of the collar. Next week we'll kind of talk about why prong collars are better than choker chains or harnesses or flat collars, but we're kind of out of time tonight, okay? I really appreciate you guys being here and I will see you guys next week. You're very welcome. You're very welcome.